Water Bank is at the Stockyards in Fort Worth. The Longhorns, famous here at the Stockyards, and everyone comes out to get a little bit of a feel of the cowboy life. How about the horses in this chase? Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, Kurt Busch, Matt Kenson, Carl Edwards, Jimmy Johnson, and Joey Logano, who is fastest at Texas. Those horses trying to make it into the championship four. And they have an opportunity tomorrow afternoon from No Limits, Texas, to win their way into a spot in Miami for the championship. That's the way the format works. You win and you advance. Only eight drivers now still with an opportunity. Jimmy Johnson still trying to join two of the greatest of all time at seven championships. Matt Kenseth is looking for another title. He's already won a Sprint Cup championship. So we mentioned short runs and long runs, and good to have a short run on restarts on car, but also in the long runs, there will be those long runs here. How do you handicap a car at this racetrack and say, okay, he's going to be good? Well, I think this car we're riding along with right, back, right here, Matt Kenton, is sneaky good. He hasn't put the lap time I found. He's 23rd in practice. I don't think anyone's looking at him as one of the favorites. But I, I look at different things. You and I talked about it, Jeff. When he left pit road, he was stuck behind the 31 on old tires. Didn't put that fast lap down. But when we continue to watch his lap times, watch him inside the race car, while you see a lot of wheel movement, it seems to be a little calmer to me until that moment. <laughs> now that maybe he's selling me the other way. Yeah. But that Not kid's there. But, you know, he's that veteran driver. We've talked about this being a 500-mile race. I think that suits that kid. I think he understands how to put himself in position in a three-and-a-half-hour race, 500 miles, to get that win to move on to Miami. 334 laps is what 500 miles will be here at Texas. Mike? Well, Rick, uh, just to use Steve's words, he, he described Matt as sneaky good. Well, maybe we shouldn't be all that surprised. You look back at the last few races, in two of the last three races, he's led the most laps. So uh, he hasn't gotten a victory in, in any of those races, but he's certainly been very good and uh, performing at a very high level. Now, as for the Gibbs situation with the bumps here at the racetrack, it's interesting because Matt is pitted in the garage directly between Denny Hamlin, and on his left, that's where you'll find the 18 of Kyle Busch. And it's a huge contrast just visually when you see them. You see the 11 was up on scales, the 18 was up on scales, both drivers out of the race car, the team scrambling to try to make adjustments. Meanwhile, Matt sat calmly in his race car, the car was on the ground, they made some small adjustments. It seems like his car may be a, a little bit easier to handle through the bumps than his teammates for sure at this point. Marty? Meanwhile, the other drug racing teammate, Carl Edwards, is good, and everyone knows it, Mike. They're not quietly good. On the 10-lap average, they are fastest. On the 15-lap average, they are fastest. I asked the team a moment ago, how's Carl feel about the car? Extremely happy was their comment. And again, brand new race car for this 19 team here this weekend. We talked about the confidence they have here in Texas, and why not? They've run well at this racetrack in the past. And it's funny, even though they're in this must-win situation, Carl said yesterday, pressure's off our racing. We know what we need to do. This Game 7 moment that they have for the next two weeks, it kind of feels like the pressure's off a little bit, even though they're in this must-win situation. But what does this change, Rick? We've talked all year long how well the Joe Gibbs drivers have worked together. But now they have one that we saw at the start at Talladega. Denny Hamlin, listen, we like you. You're a teammate. But you go race. We're going to ride in the back. We're going to have to do what's better for the company. Right. Fast forward to Martinsville. The closing laps of that race. Some disappointment, a little bit of heat on the radio about how the 11 and the 18 and the teammates were racing one another. And now we come here to Texas where Carl Edwards has a great race car, but is it a must win? How will Denny Hamlin, Matt Kenseth, Kyle Busch, how will they continue to race each other? Because there's four Gibbs cars, an or spots in Miami, and Jimmy Johnson took one. Right. So there's three remaining spots. Someone's going to be left out, Jeff. So how, as a teammate, can you play nice knowing one of you isn't going to be invited to the party? Yeah, we heard about a, a driver's only meeting at Joe Gibbs racing last week after after the Martinsville event. They all came here. They all seem like they're getting along, and everybody's working well together. But listen, this is a self-serving sport. You, you know, you want to be part of a team, and you want to work together because you know it's going to help you. And you have to give them help or they're not going to help you. But 
This is about you and your team. This is about finding a way to transfer in, and it really turns into when the race starts, they got to take care of themselves. And I think it's a slim chance that all the Gibbs cars are going to be where we know they're not going to be in Homestead. Right. And I'd be surprised if half of them are in Homestead because it's just you have so much competition. So you've got to fight for you and your team and do what's best for you. Well, this isn't new. This isn't a new story for Joe Gibbs Racing. It's a great problem to have, but when you have fast race cars, they have to work together, and it started off at the beginning of the year, the Daytona 500. They did what they said. They were going to play nice to the white flag, and they did it, but when it was time to go, it was aggression. The 11 makes a big move, takes the push, wins the Daytona 500. In Martinville in the spring, we saw the 20 and the 18 working very well together through the end of the race. The 20, the 18 was at the, the, 20 was at the 18 in. All that worked out great, but as it got late in the race, Kyle Busch could no longer do that. They ended up at Richmond. Teammates and Kyle not happy with the fact that Carl moved him out of the way. And again, teammates, one celebrating, the other one a little dejected. Then we come to Kansas, and the heat of the chase is on. These are drivers are trying to figure out at the 18 and the 19 battle tooth and nail for that position on the racetrack. Mentioned Talladega, all these guys, these three teams fell to the back. They could not afford a bad race, and they left Denny Hamlin up there by himself to fit for it. And then we go last week to Martinsville, and the three Joe Gibbs cars battle each other on the racetrack like it's for the win, but the issue is Jimmy Johnson, he's out in front of all three of these, leaving them, going to victory lane, and we heard that on the radio, these drivers say, we are such great teammates, we're letting the 48 win this race because they race each other so hard. How long? Can't continue. We'll see how well the meeting worked. And again, Joe Gibbs Racing currently in this practice, not even inside the top 20 for any of the drivers. 